That's a classic example of Altostratus. It's got a very watery, grayish appearance, ground glass, sun shining through it, and a lack of any halo phenomena. Here's what it looks like on the satellite image. We are within this area here in north central Texas, and what we see there are some very cold cloud tops, a little bit of transverse banding, and a lot of this is due to a either a southern stream polar front jet or a subtropical jet. We can head to the model data and start looking at clues. Here we can see the highest winds are concentrated up at about 40,000 feet, 110 knots up there, and the velocities do weaken substantially down at about 20,000 feet, only getting about 30 knots there. The 200 millibar chart does show that jet extending from northern Mexico out towards Georgia and 300 millibars. We do pick up a continued signature of that jet. Then looking at the heights and thickness, well, we do have a strong high pressure area in Texas. We've got damming of cold air in northern Mexico. You can see some snow showers within that mass. North winds on the Gulf, so this is going to be a polar front jet, probably with some characteristics of a subtropical jet. And we can segue right into that surface analysis. There's that high pressure area. If we look further south, we can see the remains of an old frontal system out there in the Yucatan, out there into the Mexico City area, and here's a reinforcing shot of cold air. So certainly some bare clinicity in this region right here helping to support that upper-level jet. Across the northeastern U.S., we have an outgoing frontal system, some snow coming down out there in far northern New York, even some snow down towards Albany and Vermont, and that changes over to rain in eastern New England. In the wake of that, we've got 20s and 30s coming down through the Great Lakes. Some of that is producing some lake-effect snow. Further out in the plains, we have a fresh incursion of cold air. You can see the thermal gradient right there. However, at the surface, extensive warming, some downslope, so the temperatures back behind that front are rather mild. The triple point located around Pierre, South Dakota, and south of that, some very healthy downslope flow producing 60s in Colorado. In the western U.S., modifying maritime polar air, 30s and 40s, all the way down towards the southern Great Basin region, and Las Vegas, a rather cool 60 degrees, and you can see north winds there at Grand Canyon. Then looking out into the Pacific, a little bit quieter than what we've seen, but there is another frontal system heading, of course, towards British Columbia. So that's going to produce more rain and snows throughout the province. And then just moving quickly up towards Alaska, continued cold. Got a lot of sub-zero conditions all the way down towards the southern part of the state, minus six, way down there. I think that's Iliamna. And uh, what is that? Six above at Anchorage. So that's definitely a cold one. And we do have a change out there in Canada. Let's move out to the Canadian High Arctic and bring that a little bit further north. We've got minus 40. That's going to be the coldest temperature I've observed in North America this season. That's at Eureka on Elamir Island. Minus 31 up at Alert. We've got minus 37 at Rhea Point. So that is some very stout cold air. And then further down south, minus 20 at Cambridge Bay. So that's going to be the extent of the really brutal Arctic air. And then just a quick check out in the Atlantic. High pressure continuing to cover that region. It has subsided from 1048 to 1036 millibars. However, quite cold there in Iceland. And we're seeing some freezing rain along the Greenland coast. Some of that freezing rain all the way down into 
far northeastern Quebec. And let's check in on the atmospheric river situation. We are in a pretty serious pattern for the far Pacific Northwest. Here's the next system upstream that will be coming into the region. Tomorrow night into Saturday, heading pretty much right into the Juan de Fuca Strait area between Vancouver Island and the Washington Coastal Range. That looks like it could have a pretty substantial effect on the area between Seattle and Vancouver. IVT values near 800. And another slog coming in for midweek, around the 30th or 1st. What is that going to be? Yeah, that's Tuesday going into Wednesday. And some of these values are higher than anything I've seen recently. That track looks like it goes a little bit further north towards the north half of Vancouver Island mostly, up towards Prince Rupert. However, there probably will be some effects further south. Let's see what the moisture situation looks like closer to home. In the central and eastern U.S., we tend to use precipitable water instead of IVT. And that's just a measure of how much moisture can be squeezed out of a vertical column into an imaginary rain gauge at the surface. So down near the Texas Gulf Coast, about an inch and a half, and up in the Midwest, much lower, near a quarter inch. We can see the destructive effect of the north winds on the moisture, clearing out that moisture and replacing it with dry air. And the only place we find significant readings are along the coast and back into Mexico. And here we do see a little bit of cyclonic curvature in the wind field, a little upper level low in that region. And let's take a look at the forecast real quick. We can see substantial moisture advection in Texas, rapidly coming up to over an inch around Dallas and Austin, and almost an inch and a half in Houston. So that may couple with some upper level lift and produce some rain over the weekend. And then we see that it's being replaced with more dry air. And we've got this Alberta clipper dropping out of the Dakotas. Where'd that go? Yeah, there it is. That's going to be around Monday or Tuesday. Let's uh, also take a look at the Pacific Northwest with that system heading inland. We've got about an inch to an inch and a half of precipitable water around Quileute coming into the Puget Sound area. And then you can see the effects of the drying along the mountains of Washington and British Columbia. And then it reemerges around Sunday out there in Montana and Alberta. And that tracks eastward and becomes our little Alberta clipper. Now, back on Wednesday, we did talk a little bit about the polar vortex and a shift coming up for December, and I'll show that to you on the 850 millibar temperature anomaly. Now, starting out, what you see here is kind of a succession of warm and cold air masses. So there's one after the other. This air mass here augmented by downslope flow, and then we get into some very warm tropical air associated with these atmospheric rivers lurking offshore. So we're going to kind of continue that pattern for the next week or so. As I run that forward, you can see that happening. There's a shot of downslope flow on the plains by Monday. Then we get a little bit of cold air coming into the Great Lakes. Another shot of downslope and warm air around the 2nd and 3rd of December. And then we see a pattern shift. Alaska will continue to be cold over the next couple of weeks, but... A lot of things are coming together, the development of the polar vortex up there in northern Canada, and also the trajectories shaping up to be more northwest to southeast. And you're going to see that right around here as we run this forward. So here it comes, cold air bulldozing its way south around the 4th or 5th, and the models have pretty consistently shown this pattern. So it's going to be quite cold east of the Rockies for about the 4th and 5th. And you can see that there's quite a bit of depth northward with this air mass. It's got a pretty substantial volume, and that's going to be coming south. So it looks to be pretty cold there for the second week of December. 
Some of that will, of course, infiltrate even Mexico. And when that happens, they tend to get a lot of snow showers up on the plateaus, some cold air locked into the valleys, and this does have a pretty significant southward extent there, affecting that gap right there. We've talked about that in previous episodes. They tend to get some strong windstorms and dust storms through that part of Mexico when these patterns occur. Now, beyond that, around the 10th of December, that's too far out, but the model is indicating possibly it could come together once again towards the very end. But, you know, we'll see about that. Now, with the prospect of cold air being fairly certain, we do need to start looking at snowfall. In the meantime, just a little bit of snow there for the Great Lakes, but I'm not really seeing a very strong snow pattern going into the first and second week of December. It is uh, kind of dry, and the models are not really favoring any particular strong wave coming out of the west. So a little bit of snow here and there, depending where you are, but this far out, it's going to be kind of indeterminate. We don't have a whole lot of snow signals because of the split flow pattern being forecast for that point. One strong system up north, and that'll certainly support snow up there around Wisconsin, Minnesota. This is a little bit more uncertain in Texas, but if it's cold enough and we pick up enough moisture from the Pacific, that could favor some snow in Texas as well. But that's pretty far out. And towards the very end, yeah, that's a very high amplitude pattern. This is the 5th going into the 6th of December. That's going to certainly kick down some cold air. You can see the polar vortex is well developed. So it's going to continue cold for probably at least till the 9th or 10th. But again, this is getting way out there. We, What we do know is it will be cold. The first going into the second week of December after that, we really just don't know. But man, that, yeah, that's some very interesting patterns there. So we shall see. But in the meantime, we're going to be looking for some warm air on the West Coast. Temperatures up in the 70s in the northern San Joaquin Valley, 73 at Ukiah, 72 at Redding for tomorrow. For Sunday, even warmer. We're expecting to break records at Helena, Glasgow, 62, breaking the record for the date set in 2002, and same thing at Burns, Oregon. The warm weather continues on Monday, 50s in Wyoming, and even near 70 in Kansas. Continued warm on Tuesday, seeing 80s showing up in Arizona. And for Wednesday, the first day of December, the fun continues. Very warm at Great Falls, 60, tying the record for the date. And we are going to be breaking records in the Mojave Desert. But this is when change is going to be coming at us from Canada. Cold air heading into the northern plains around the 3rd or 4th. And a quick look at different parts of the country, including Mexico, can see some cumulonimbus clouds within that, some embedded showers and storms crossing the Sierra Madre Occidental. And then further to the west, that's going to be the upper level low. You can kind of see that spin in the cloud field. A nice day in California, but can see a little bit of thin cirrus working across the Mojave Desert into southwestern Utah. Working further north into Northern California and Oregon, getting some of that Pacific flow coming inland and up and over the cold dome. So that's producing a little bit of isentropic lift and more of that up in Washington, closer to the axis of the better moisture. Up along the U.S. Canadian border, we've got the polar front jet. And with a strong zonal component, we've got standing lenticular waves. There they are, places like Billings and Helena, getting some of that standing lenticular altocumulus and cirrus. And they're getting that pattern as well around Cheyenne and Fort Collins. 
In the Dakotas, we find the western edge of the cold air, that cold air mass feeding in from Minnesota into North Dakota, and then we've got downslope flow in the western Dakotas. Not much moisture involved in that, so very little at the surface, but quite a bit of mid and upper level cloud traversing that region. In the central plains, we've got a warm air advection pattern. Cooler air up there in Iowa, Des Moines, and then it warms up substantially as we get into the downslope pattern in Colorado and western Kansas, almost 70 degrees at around liberal, contrasting with the 40s in the Kansas City area. And there's Texas getting some of that cirrus and altostratus associated with the southern stream system. Florida dominated by northeasterly flow. It's a cool pattern coming in from the northeast there. They've got one front which has passed about a day or two ago, and the second one dropping through the central part of the state, so temperatures up north a little bit colder. The surface ridge axis runs from about Lake Michigan down through the Mississippi River Valley, so on the eastern side of that, we've got cold air advection spreading through Ohio, Pennsylvania, and you can certainly see it in the cloud field, considerable stratus and stratocumulus due to the modification of that air over the relatively warm terrain. As we head further to the northeast, we get deeper into that cold air advection. Very cold day there at New York City and Philadelphia, northwesterly flow. And as we get further up into New England, we start picking up the precipitation field. And there's a closer look at it around Maine into Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. Not much to say about that, but that is some very strong frontal lift, some frontogenesis, and development of extensive precip. And that will do it for our Friday edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you enjoyed it. I want to welcome our new patron, Terry Allen Taylor. Welcome, and I appreciate the Patreon support. That will help keep this program going for a while yet. So, again, thank you. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving yesterday. Those of you outside the U.S., I hope you had a great day nonetheless. And we'll be back here, I think, on Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. We do have some travel plans. They're kind of up in the air right now, so I'm not really sure what's going to happen next week, but I will keep you all updated. In any case, we will talk to you at some point next week. So enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.